Hey there, tech fans. Rick here from the O-Ray team with an overview of the new 18 gig 4x4 seamless ultra high definition matrix switcher. This product makes it very simple for you to select from up to four different HDMI media sources and send that selected source to any one of four different output devices. And because it's a matrix, you can select multiple input sources and send those to the same monitor for either a split screen or quad screen view, or you can select a single source and send it to all four monitors simultaneously to create a gigantic video wall. The product provides support for 4K ultra high definition resolution on both input and output. It also provides for audio injection and audio extraction so you can mix and match the audio and video streams as well as passing the audio along to a high fidelity system for that perfect theater experience. Also included are four sets of infrared blasters that allow you to easily control your media and you can make your selections through the buttons on the front of the unit, the remote control that's included, or even through software. Now, as part of this overview, I'd like to start with an unboxing of the product just to show you all the components that are included, and then I'll take a closer look at each of the components and explain exactly what they do. Then I'll list the audio and video standards of product and support. And then finally, I'll come back and actually install the product here to show you just how easy it'll be to use with your own equipment. So let's get started with the unboxing. When you first open the box, you're gonna find the switcher matrix. You'll find four sets of infrared blasters these are transmitters, these are receivers, and it's important you make sure you connect them to the right ports on the back. Also included are sticky pads where you can attach these to your media devices. There's a power cable, a remote control, and a full instruction manual that lists all the connections you'll need to make to get it working, as well as specifications of what the product can support. Now, if you stay tuned, I'll take a much closer look at the product and explain exactly how you'll connect this up to your own equipment, and that'll list the audio and video standards that it can support. Included with the kit is the 4x4 matrix switcher, a power cord, a remote control that can be used to quickly select both your media input and your output devices, four infrared receivers, four infrared transmitters, and sticky pads that can be used to attach these to your media devices. And even though these look very similar, they are different, and it's very important you connect up the infrared transmitters to the IR output port and the infrared receivers to the IR input port on the back of the matrix switcher. Also included, are four connection blocks for audio output, four connection blocks for audio input, and one connection block for RS-232 connections that allow you to control the device. Finally, there's a full instruction manual also included that provides connection diagrams and all the information you'll need to use this product with your own equipment. On the front of the matrix switcher, starting on the left-hand side, you'll find a large digital display, and this is showing you the current status of the product, as well as which inputs are connected to which outputs. It's also used during the programming functions when you're setting up scenes to confirm your selections. To the right of that are three LED indicators, IR, COM, and LOCK. IR showing you that you've got a valid communication occurring between one of the infrared receivers or infrared transmitters for control of the media. Above that is a COM indicator. That's showing you that a computer is currently connected to the device and changing the programming or modifying scenes. To the right of that is a lock button. If you hold this for two seconds, the lock indicator will come on, which basically tells you that all the buttons to the right are disarmed at that point. If you want to activate those buttons, you'll hold this again for two seconds, the LED will go out, and all these buttons become active. To the right of that are four input selection buttons and four output selection buttons. And to the right of that, is the menu selection where you have programming options here to set up various scenes that you can recall at the touch of a button. All of these are explained very well in the manual. On either side, you'll notice ears that are used for holding the unit, as well as rails that can be used to mount this into a standard audio rack. On the bottom, you'll find four feet, so this can be set on the top of a table and those feet protect it from actually scratching that surface. On either end, you'll find ventilation holes, which keep the internal electronics at a comfortable temperature, as well as a fan that's used to evacuate all the hot air inside the unit, again, to keep the electronics functioning perfectly. On the rear of the unit, starting on the left-hand side, you'll find a LAN port that can be used for connecting the matrix switcher to your network, as well as an RS-232 port for direct connection to a computer. Both of these allow you to remotely configure and operate the product. To the right of that are four IR output ports, and four IR input ports. These are used with the included infrared blaster kits for remote control of your media. To the right of that are four audio input ports, one, two, three, and four, and you can use the included block connectors to make this wiring easy. And this is where you can actually add an audio stream to the media stream that you're sharing with those output devices. Below those connections are four HDMI ports that are connected up to your media input devices, one, two, three, and four. Continuing to the right, 
You'll find four audio output ports, both analog and digital. These can be connected to external amplifiers to improve the audio quality. Below that are four HDMI ports for your output devices, and these will connect up to whatever monitors you'd like to display the input media on. To the right of that, you'll find a port for connection to your power cord, as well as an on-off switch. There's also a fuse right here behind this cover that'll protect this against power surges. And finally, to the right, there's a ground connection here that you can connect up to eliminate outside interference. The O-Ray 18 gig 4x4 seamless ultra high definition matrix switcher supports virtually all HDMI media devices, including laptops, game systems, DVD players, cable boxes, and larger broadcast systems. The product features include full support for video resolutions up to 4K at 60 frames a second on both input devices and output devices. It's HDMI 2.0 and HDCP 2.2 compliant. It offers a wide variety of seamless switching options for both input and output devices, as well as a video wall function. It provides external left and right audio insertion, as well as audio output connections on the back of the unit, so you can pass that audio along to a high quality audio system for that full theater experience. It allows you to make your selections for input and output through the buttons on the front, the included remote control, or through software. It also includes a set of infrared blasters for all four of the inputs to allow easy control of your media. Now I'll show you just how easy it'll be to use this product with your own equipment. For this demonstration, I've set up the 4x4 matrix switcher here, and I've got four monitors set up. Output number one, output number two, output number three, and output number four. I also have four media players set up that have different images displayed on them. And currently, I've got the input number one to the output number one, so you can see the input is up there on monitor number one, and all the rest of them are on the same monitors. Now, I'm gonna show you how to switch between those inputs and outputs in a second, but the first thing you'll wanna do when you first set up the product is make sure your input resolution and your output resolution are set to match your source and your output displays. And that's very easy to do, and I'll show you how to do that now. Adjusting the output resolution for the system is done individually for each of the displays, and you'll start by tapping the res button, selecting the output you'd like to modify. The minute you make that selection, its current resolution will be shown here. You can use the next button to step through the various options you have for resolution until you find one that matches your display, and then tap the take button to apply it for that output. Then you can move on to two, three, and four. So let's say we want to modify the output for number one. I'll tap res, number one, shows me the current resolution, which is incorrect. Let me step through to the one that I need. Right there, hit take, and that'll apply it. Now we'll take a look at number two. I'll hit res, number two. That's currently set to the resolution that I want, so I'll leave it alone. Let me check number three. Again, currently set to the correct resolution. We'll leave it alone. And then finally, number four. And again, that's set to the correct resolution. So once those have all been set, you can move on to setting the EDID switch selections for your inputs. Adjusting the input resolution for your media devices is just as simple. You'll start by tapping the EDID button, selecting the input you'd like to modify. The minute you make that selection, its current resolution will be displayed here. You can use the next button to step through the various options you have for resolution until you find one that matches your media device, then tap take to apply that. So let's take a look at input number one. I'll tap EDID, number one, I need to change that. There we go, and I'll hit take, and that'll apply it. Now we'll take a look at number two. That one's set correctly, but let me step through the different options to show you all the different resolutions available for the input. You can even go into manual mode if needed. We'll wanna adjust this back to that one, and I'll hit take. Now we'll try number three. That's already set correctly, so we'll let it time out. And we'll check input number four. That's not correct, so we'll set that. There we go, and hit take. And that'll apply it. Now that you've verified all of your inputs and all of your outputs are set correctly, you can move on to making changes to which input goes to which output. I'll show you that next. Now that you've adjusted both the input and output resolutions to correctly match your input media devices and your output display specifications, I'll show you how you can redirect the inputs to whichever output you want by using the buttons on the front of the product. It's a really simple three-step process that starts with selecting the output you want to change, 
the input you'd like to send to that output and tapping take to actually make it happen. Now currently I've got it set up where input number one is being displayed on monitor number one, input number two on monitor number two, three to three and four to four. But let's say I wanted to change what's being displayed on monitor number one to input number two. I would tap output one, input two, and take. And it changes just that quickly. And if I wanted to change what's being displayed on monitor number two to say input number three, I would tap output two, input three, and take. You also have the option of sending the same input to all four monitors simultaneously just by tapping the all button. So if I tap all and I put input number two and take, it changes all of them to input number two. Now to reset this, you can actually go through individually and tap one and one and take, two and two and take, and that takes a little bit of time. So you can also save scenes. So if there's a scene that you use a lot, maybe you wanna have all the inputs sent to the correct monitor, you can actually save that. And you do that by using the save button down here and selecting an output. You can also recall those scenes very quickly. So I've already set up one of the scenes to sort of reset everything where it puts input number one on monitor number one and input two on monitor two. And to recall that, you tap the recall button, scene number one is which I've saved it, and hit take, and it puts them all back where they were. And you can save up to eight scenes on this uh, in the programming that you can use on a regular basis. So if there are scenes you're gonna use quite often, you can save those, keep track of them, and just by tapping that recall button, you can actually pull that scene up very, very quickly. And that's really all there is to it. I hope you found this overview of the new 18 gig 4x4 seamless ultra high definition matrix switcher helpful. The product was engineered to make it very easy for you to control all your media and select from up to four different HDMI media sources and send those to four different output devices, either individually or all at the same time. Everything you need to get started is included with the kit and with a few simple connections, you can be up and running in no time. So until next time, thanks for watching.